and CRT, John Derrick, and CRT debates on on personal from and CRT. It's a, it's a great honor to be here talking to you. Uh, the reason I think I'm going to be addressing you is that uh, for the last almost more than a year, uh, there was a committee which was formed to look at design thinking and innovation in schools by CBSC. And uh, religiously, almost to the 30 year exception, we met on Friday mornings uh, of the last year. And uh, we put together a curriculum which we think will be which will be really good for the students. Okay, so, so that's the background from which I come. You know, I teach in the discipline of design. I've been at IIT Bombay for the last 42 years. Okay, but I'd like to just. Uh, Tell my journey into design because uh, if I say that right, uh, maybe you understand how design thinking is a bit different from learning other subjects. You know, I had uh, really nice experiences in schools. Maybe you need to turn it and go down. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, so I had really nice experiences going to, and I have very fond memories of my school days fond memories of my good teachers. Yeah, so that's that. So I studied in, you know, on the Western Hills in a place called Kool, my primary school. Then I went to... Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, then I went to Mysore. Uh, again, it's moving. I think I should switch to the other one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can... Hello? Yeah, I think this is better. Yeah. So I went to my school, to my secondary school, and then to Bangalore, and then to IIT Madras to do mechanical engineering. Uh, and then I came to IIT Bombay to do product design. Okay. So the reason I'm saying that, then I went to the US to do, uh, again, another master's in graphic design. Okay. So this is my journey into education. But you know, there was a big difference when I came to the So there was a big difference in the way I learned things. You know, that was, you know, IIT was very structured, analytical. You know, that part of the brain, you know, really was exciting to be in IIT because they gave us really good challenges to work on. It was not an easy to pass through the 
different years. Okay, so that was one kind of learning. But uh, when I came to IIT Bombay, that is a different kind of learning, which, uh, for example, design thinking is based on. You know, I'll, I'll just narrate uh, the first day class what the teacher did. Okay, and uh, we hardly call them teachers. They, they would like to be called as uh, mentors. And uh, for a change, uh, they insisted on calling everybody by first name. So my Dr. Chattopatia was called as Chattu for all of us. You know, very fondly we remember it. He came with a bunch of eggs to the class. This is our first class. Okay, and he said that I'll give you two hours. Okay, then two hours uh, you need to design a packaging for the egg and we'll drop it from five feet. Okay, and he pushed off from the class. Okay, so this is our first learning. So, of course, with whatever analytical mind that we have, we put on our thick boot hats and we were 10 students in that class. Okay, so in the two hours, five of us, my including, broke the egg. Okay, and three of them, the eggs didn't break but it cracked. Okay, but two solutions, nothing happened to the egg. Okay, then we spent another hour analyzing how, how some eggs broke and how some didn't work and some actually survived this side. It was a very short exercise, right? You have to really think uh, you know, fast and hard to do this. Okay? And one thing we realized when we did this exercise was that it's very clear. The people whose eggs didn't break or just crashed actually had used a different way of thinking. We were worried about which fell to the ground, for, for example, didn't break. Like, for example, one student had used the analogy of a cat jumping from first floor but would land softly. Okay, so he had used the mechanism of what it requires to land softly as a principle to design his packaging. Okay, another person had actually used the principle of seed. He put a fan on top of it, so when it falls down, it, it, it falls circularly. You know, and so it doesn't really get damaged. So, so it was very clear. So you had to have a different way of uh, thinking here, you know, where you actually thought horizontally and then come out with a solution. So that's one nice example, okay? So I'll give you another example to say how design thinking can be used very effectively. Design thinking says that you can solve very complicated problems, but for that you have to follow a simple process. Okay, the process is very simple. It says that wherever the problem exists, you go to the place and try to understand it, study it. You know, if it is people, you build empathy with them. You know, you put, put yourself in their shoes to understand it. Okay, then you kind of understand and analyze what the problem is. Okay, then you come out with creative options. You don't come out with the first, you know, solution that you have. You come out with multiple solutions. Okay, and then you pick and choose one of them and after that you can actually try to build it, make a prototype, use your engineering principles or science principles and do it and then that becomes your final solution and invariably what happens in this process is that you are able to do something which has not been done before. Okay, that's the big takeaway. So if, and we realize that, that you can actually apply this methodology to, to anything. You know, whether you're teaching physics, science, chemistry, whether later on you become a lawyer or a scientist or, a, or even a doctor, you can use this principle of, you know, looking at the process and trying to change things. Okay, so that is what. So I'll give you another simple second example. Second example, we were very fortunate by the election commission. We were commissioned to design the electronic voting machine. Okay, this was in the 90s. So what we did was that we could have just sat with the electronics and come out with a solution. No, we didn't do that. We actually went to different places where the elections, by-elections were held, and we actually wanted to study how elections are done, what happens in a booth, how much time uh, it takes, what kind of stakeholders are there. So we talked to the voters, we talked to the, you know, the politicians who are standing for election, the election people, you know, who are conducting the election, 
Okay, so we understood the problem from all these point of view. Okay, so one of the big takeaways, for example, we understood was that that uh, in the old system it was a paper system, right? So you can capture the booth, and within a short time, you can actually put all these words and put it into the system, and that's done. Okay, so how to mitigate this, right? So that was one big problem. Second was that there was a distrust of the system. You know, people didn't really believe that, you know, everything was held authentically. You know, there's something somewhere wrong, right? So, so we had to build these things into the, into the mechanism itself. So one of the things we did was that the sense of security we know is that Indians are very good. You know, we try to put big locks. You know, we put seals sometimes. Okay, so we said that let's try to integrate that into the voting machine. Voting machine locks itself electronically. Nothing can you can do. But it is not a physical manifest because you can't see it being locked, right? So what we did was that in the doors which close, we put a loop and you can put a thread and you can seal it physically. And you can even put your signature on it, okay? And that became a very trustworthy way of doing it. It was something very cultural which was there. If you had not gone around and seen this, we wouldn't have come to that solution. Even now, the voting machine has this as a solution. We also built uh, a, a span of about you know three minutes between the two votes. Okay, you cannot press continuously. So even if a voting is done, the next voting can only be done after three minutes. Okay, so this delay made sure that the booth can't be captured and. You know, number. So I'm just telling you two things where you have to think very horizontally and come out with solutions. Okay. So uh, to put the whole thing in perspective, uh, just wanted to say that this method of studying, you know, uh, by doing projects, by exploring, experimenting, making mistakes, has been part of the design curriculum uh, for a very long time. I studied design in IIT at, in the 1970s mid 70s okay and we started by trying out things you know and uh, you get involved in that okay it's experiential learning you do projects that means you do it and learn many times it's dirty you get your hands dirty in learning this okay and how much of this can be applied to other fields is something that we can talk about okay and uh, what has happened is that then design you know, design was practiced in the West and uh, it had its uh, importance. You know, we looked at the West for good design. Okay, though we had our traditional design in India, which was very sophisticated, but we kind of lost it somewhere. Okay, and the uh, industrial products came in. So India, after the country opened up again, became design conscious. Okay, so, so the growth of design schools happened Okay, initially there was only IIT Bombay and the National Institute of Design. Other schools came in and now the growth is almost like every month there are 10-15 schools coming up. You know, altogether about 300-400 schools are there. So that's another option which is there for a student, you know, which was not there before. You know, so, so they go into the creative industries. Okay, so that is one track you can think of, okay. But I think more than that, what we are saying is that if you actually apply the principles of design thinking into physics and make learning of physics much more enriching, that's one way out, okay. So this is what we've been doing. At one end, you can go through a program of design thinking, take its principles and apply it how you can actually teach better, you know, make the teaching a much better experience process for the for the students. At the other end, you know, you can use the design thinking process as a creative discipline so that the students learn the fundamentals of design and they become creative problem solvers. Okay, but ultimately, even if after passing out, if they don't perceive design, this knowledge, they would always have it with them. You know, whether they become doctors or something else, they would go and apply this uh, knowledge to whatever discipline they are trying to do. Okay, so, uh, so just wanted to ask you, does that little bit make it clear what could be design thinking? Yeah. yeah, so it is a horizontal way of thinking rather than a vertical way of thinking. You know, and a lot of sciences, maths, everything, 
you solve the problem very vertically. There are steps to do it and if you go through it, you actually find the answer and typically there is one answer. Okay. Whereas in design, you actually try to solve the problem, you come out with many solutions and it's always a challenge to pick up the right solution because there is no one way of doing things you'll actually discover. There are many ways of doing things. Okay. So that is the big difference. Yes. It's like divergent thinking. Yes, divergent thinking is another name for, for the same thing, the process, you know. Uh, lateral thinking is another name. Out of the box thinking is another name. Okay, so what we are doing is we are saying it, it, it is not something which is, you know, or in a, comes in a jiffy, but you can actually follow a process and everybody can learn it, you know. Otherwise you think, you know, this student is creative, he is born with this creative ability. What we are saying that everybody is creative, is just that you have to exercise your creativity. And to exercise that creativity, if you can use the design process, it becomes easier to do it. You know, that's the only premise on which we've done it. So for the last one, one and a half years, we've been, you know, working on trying to develop a curriculum. I have just, uh, you know, two sample books here. Uh, this is for class six. So I'm going to just circulate, but I'll, I'll you know, go through the slides here. You know, one is, uh, we said that, you know, roughly, uh, if you have to learn design thinking, you have to learn through problem solving. Okay, it is a hands-on exercise. Okay, uh, it is not a theoretical subject. It's only when you apply it, you come to understand it. Okay, so we said that one of the things we decided was that we'll not really have textbooks, but we'll have task books. Okay, task books are problems that are given which the students will solve with the help of the teacher. And the teacher kind of mentors the students to solve it. They come out with many solutions, you know, and they get confidence in doing it. And you can increase the complexity of these problems from year to year. Okay, so simple problems to bigger problems, uh, problems which are very, you know, uh, near to them in the initial period to problems which are like, let's say, world problems at the, at the 12th standard. So we said that let's map these things and then do it, you know. So maybe if you can put on the slides, we can go into this. So I can operate here, right? Okay. Yeah, so it started, you know, uh, Professor Jyotsna was part of this also. You know, we held twice uh, meetings in our school to discuss about how to introduce design and innovation in school curriculum, you know, and it was uh, during the, you know, conference that we held called as Designing for Children, you know, and uh, we had big committees which sat together, almost about, uh, you know, 60 people, you know, who are, from, who are teachers, who are design teachers, uh, you know, professionals. We sat together and made a proposal and sent it to the ministry. But at that point of time, there was no way they could actually introduce a new subject. You know, so that was the difficult uh, part of it. But I think the whole thing changed when NEP 2020 came into being. You know, it had it's in mentioned many of the things which are very dear to design. You know, for example, critical thinking, communication techniques, creativity and innovation. Yeah, these are part and parcel of design, you know, uh, you know, courses. So it became very easy to convince the ministry saying that I think, you know, it is also very important because design and innovation will also in the later period go towards enriching our own nation, you know, because if everybody becomes creative and they can solve problems, then, uh, you know, then it will become a big boon to the country. So I think as, you know, after mapping to NEP 2020 goals, they said they formed a committee to look into it and they said, let's do it for the sixth standard onwards. So six, seventh, eighth, it's an exposure program, but from ninth onwards, it's about 18 hours during six, seventh, eighth. Okay, either in sixth or seventh or eighth, the students can try out this course. If they think that is, uh, you know, uh, they have enough interest in this, then continue it on 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, where it becomes almost 160 hours, you know. So this is the rough background. But if you look at it, we have in the center, uh, that's the intention, what we want to do. Uh, the course is learned through by doing tasks, 
that means there are small projects you know which are given and they solve it through it uh, the teacher teaches them using exposures you know there are a set of slides or a video that is played to, for them to get exposed to the subjects and uh, uh, through examples and case studies okay and uh, there are some tools in the process they learn like for example brainstorming or mind mapping these are tools for creativity which the students can learn okay and uh, they learn the process of how to solve the problem okay so to do this we formed a team there uh, because the content creation was very important so the experts added to this and whatever we did we gave it to the teachers to go try it out with uh, you know students and get a feedback and we incorporated this feedback into the task books at the other side there was this big task because teachers are not trained in design thinking so how do we do it so we've created a teachers manual uh, which is a much more detailed aspect of this and we are actually going around the country you know in different places training the teachers who who would become master trainers and they would teach uh, uh, some more teachers and uh, in this endeavor the ministry's innovation cell pills uh, cell has been a big uh, help to us you know uh, they have conducted design thinking course for almost uh, 70000 uh, teachers out of that 30000 teachers have become innovation ambassadors in this school they're all very highly motivated so it's really interesting for me the first time when i go and conduct these workshops to see that kind of energy in teachers you know it was really you know very uh, for us very encouraging that you know something like this can be done so nicely in our country you know so uh, if you look at it design task is very visual output okay so there are things like you can actually put up an exhibition at the end of the course or at the end of the year you, the students can actually put up an exhibition they could be inter school exhibitions in this and of course it leads to their own portfolio you know so the problems that they've solved they become their portfolio at the end of it they can either use it or not and we said that uh, let the task book be you know it's not printed printing the end output let it be digital because if it is digital you can change it very easily you know uh, we can modify it every year every year it's possible to add on to the kitty of problems that are given there you can enhance their you know exposures and examples right so it can be something which can change on an yearly basis you know so we said let's let let's take advantage of the digital domain in case you need to print it let's provide pdfs which can be printed and supplied you know so that became a very simple and easy model to follow so if you look at it here at the end are the you know the steps for the design thinking process okay it starts from observation to understanding to ideating to prototyping and then finally reflecting that's kind of put into all the subjects they study in the school okay and that becomes the curriculum and for that we have different outputs you know which which are can be useful to different things there's an introduction and you know frequently asks a small book because this is a new subject and more than the students i think the teachers uh, would have to convince the parents about this you know so so it will be because the we have a mindset we need to change right so so it was very important that we put this book together so we have a you know a fakeus book yeah followed by exposures they are actually slide shows i'll just show you one simple exposure that we've done with the help of teachers again then followed by the task book and uh, because it's a project based uh, assignment that the students do we needed to change the type of assessment that needs to be done it's very important uh, how the students are assessed in this particular thing so i'll also show you and at the end of it they actually give feedbacks which can go on to improving what we do in the next year you know and of course the end is the teachers manual and they become the different modules in a particular grade you know? so this is an overview of it so this is the design thinking process design process has been there for a very very long time you know after the industrialization when the design schools came up in the 30s they followed a method to solve problems because the industry was involved you know and you needed to steps to uh, arrive at a solution so that's how it started off but uh, in the you know just the turn of this century the the 
companies which came up in the Bay Area, you know, and in the Silicon Valley, they wanted to use a process which is much more immediate and catchy. So they termed the design process as design thinking. You know, that terminology came in. It's just about 20 years now. This terminology has been used. Okay, so it involves the same thing, but in a different process. So if you look here, oops. Yeah, so you have the observation, okay, of a problem. Given a problem, the, you first go through that phase. You analyze the problem and you understand that particular problem space. And once you have done it, you know what the problem exactly is. You are ready to, you know, do creativity and ideating it. Once you do it, you have to try to build it. Maybe, you know, rough prototypes, you can sketch it, you can do, do paper prototypes. Okay, you, can, you have to visibly see actually what your idea is. And then finally, what you do becomes a reflection of what you do. <clears throat> so if you look at it, there are many things which are very dear to the design innovation, you know, the classroom or the studio that you built. Okay, one of course is that you know, it, it, is, it, it is a do it and learn method. You solve a problem and learn it, okay? So, so that's a very important thing. You make mistakes and you learn it, okay? It's playful, joyful experiences, right? Uh, because you're given a problem, there is a challenge, okay? And you have to solve it, okay? So, so it becomes like a puzzle solving, right? It is like playing a game. Okay, but you're actually solving a very important issue. You know, you can take up such important issue and solve it in a very interesting manner. Yeah, it also becomes very involved in terms of problem solving. You know, once you give to give a problem to them, the students will get immersed into the problem solving process. We also said many times it's nice to develop this collaborative, cooperative environment in the children. So many of these problems can be solved together. Okay, and uh, the classrooms are seen more like studios instead of classrooms. So there is no one teacher and so many students doing it, but they're all sitting together and learning it. So we'll have to change that norm from the present one. Okay, so that's an important thing for design because the teacher becomes actually a mentor in the whole process in trying to, you know, get the students to learn this thing. Yeah, it again goes back to this. Yeah, so exposures instead of textbooks. Okay, and also the problems can be very local problems. It need not be something which is you know, from a different place or something like that. So it's very contextual in the sense. So it's through exploration, experimenting, and creative options. So it's also, we need to put also, instead of the 40 minute, you know, periods that we have for different classes, it would be nice if you can combine them at least into a two hour slot, you know, because by the time you start a problem solving, it takes about that much time to solve it. You know, so these are some of the considerations we did uh, before doing it. Again, I need some help. It's not going forward. Okay, so this is roughly the process, you know, lesson plans, more views, okay, then, uh, you know, competencies, learning aims and objectives. We also matched it with uh, SDG goals, uh, which comes to modules and sub-modules. It's through exposures, tasks, and references are given. Uh, we set up the assessment criteria and feedback, uh, also the teacher's manual at the same time. Ends up as exhibition and portfolios, okay, and it can become also an online documentation at the end of it. Okay, so if you look at then from a very broader perspective, right, uh, it celebrates uh, India Okay, and, uh, and then goes to the international perspective. So the problems like six standard, they start with local problems and they go into global issues later on. So that's one mapping that we can do here. The other mapping is that they start solving problems which are very dear to them, then maybe their friends circle, then their families, then you know society, and then the community and then the world at large. 
you know so from 6 to 12 you can map that if you look at the last 200 or 300 years the whole emphasis has been on humankind at the cost of everything else okay so we have to shift from human centered to life centered very very important thing that we need to teach the children so most of the problems are not about solving just problems for us but solving for the life on earth okay so that's another emphasis the other emphasis is that we've actually created a very unsustainable world yeah the last 300 years again uh, so we have to again shift the emphasis to how to make it sustainable how to use sustainable materials it has to become part and parcel of every course not just design yeah so we are doing it and the design thinking process and also at the end it will create interest in the creative industries whatever profession he goes finally he'll still become a very creative individual that's the intention of this particular program okay so this is how roughly it is maybe it's not that visible from far but uh, if you look at it, it's about 18 hours in class 6, 7, 8, uh, becomes 160 hours in class 9, 10, 11, 12. That's how the program was done. Okay, it maps on to the intentions of the NEP 2020. Oops. Yeah, it uh, maps onto the intentions of the NEP 20 and a uh, uh, lot of visions uh, to do with creativity, fostering, you know, working together, you know, the design process, okay, identify problems and be able to solve it, apply design thinking to it, okay, and learn fundamentals of design. So these are the old and competencies wise, you know, creativity, communications, you know, skills. Uh, sensitivity to design, okay, identify problems and be able to analyze it, okay, explore creativity and its options, okay, solve problems and prototype and build objects and also match it with some of the SDG goals, you know, so that was part of the uh, program. So if you look from 6th standard to 12th standard, it starts with basics, basic skills and then comes to, you know, solving problems with creativity and thinking and later on goes into, you know, looking at different, you know, subjects of design itself. Okay, so there is a progressively complexity built into the program itself. So this is a glance at the six uh, standard uh, program. Okay, so it has got fundamentals of uh, design and storytelling that's the first module which is just a three hour module okay so if you look at the problem it can be changed from year to year but in the in what we've suggested is that they look at uh, basic elements of design very basic elements and they actually create a puppet at the end of uh, this three years three hours uh, they work together they also have to write their own story okay and they have to enact it at the end of the class Okay, so this gives them exposure to the basic elements of design, storytelling, which is also a very essential aspect of it, and they have to enact it out. That means they have to present it. So if you look at it, all the skills, you know, which are required, one is, you know, the creativity skills in trying to form a puppet out of some basic elements. They can be as creative as possible. Uh, using storytelling, storytelling is again a very creative exercise. Okay, they have to do it then they have to actually plan how role play happens with different characters okay so they have to plan that and they have to come and present it for the whole class so they learn the communication techniques so you can integrate quite a lot of the you know new age skills into solving a problem this is just one example of it okay um, yeah, so if you look at the second one, it's form transitions plus uh, documentation. So uh, they've changed a the form, let's say start with the cat and change it to dog in five steps. It can be done out of clay. Okay, so they learn the process of how some things change in, in real world. Okay, and this is also the basics of animation. You know, it changes from one form to another. If they take photographs and they play it one after another, it will see that actually the cat will change from cat to dog, okay? And uh, the next exercise is that when they go home, they have to actually look at, you know, trying to identify alphabets or human beings or animals, you know, in the nature and try to photograph them. 
Okay, so this is the like the second one. Third one is you know it's product forms. Uh, they take a principle from physics, uh, which is actually sun and shadows, and they have to create a sundial. But the sundial is a little different. It's a portable sundial. Okay, so students have to really put on their thinking hats to see how they can build a portable sundial. So they're taking a you know. Uh, principle from physics but applying it in real world so maybe it's an umbrella that they can do it's a watch you know there are so many solutions you can wear the sundial okay or you can stand and be able to tell the time of the day yeah so we students will have to come up with uh, very creative ideas in doing it okay so that's simple and the third problem which is there the last problem is uh, you know they have to actually identify problems around the school itself okay uh, really think hard and come up with solutions to solve them and then present it in the school okay so in the sixth standard for example that problem is within the school in the seventh standard what we've done is that they just go outside the school in the you know in in the street outside maybe the footpath the vendors the bus stops they think of how it can be redesigned. In the eighth standard, they go a little more further. They go into the marketplace or a public place and identify problems and try to find solution to them. So this is how we built uh, the complexity in the design thinking process. And slowly from their own surroundings, they go also outward and outward and look at other issues. Okay. So roughly this is it. So when it comes to, you know, if you look at uh, uh, eighth standard, Okay, uh, so in ninth standard and tenth standard, the complexity increases. Okay, so you you get into fundamentals of uh, two dimension to fundamentals of three dimension. Okay, uh, you look at, uh, for example, the initial part of the problem solving process to come to you know the extent of the problem solving process in terms of analysis. Okay, so if you look at it, it kind of increases. So these are modules of uh, roughly around eighteen hours duration. Uh, in the 10th standard, they get into moving images, story creation, creativity, and problem solving. So do a project on creative you know, options. Then they learn about fundamentals of communication, then uh, sustainability and design, uh, basic prototyping methods, and they do a design thinking pro you know, problem solving process, taking something from nature and trying to solve it. Okay. So I'm just giving you a glance of it. In, in the 11th standard, it goes into different disciplines of design. It goes into you know, communication and publication design, uh, into you know, uh, uh, solving information design. Yeah, so these are the different things. Then they take a communication problem and do a project in it. They get into product design, uh, digital design, game and toy design. Uh, we've been giving an exercise from the toy and game design to teachers when we go for a workshop around the country, you know, and uh, and they've been able to solve such interestingly problems in that, you know, one and a half hours duration. Yeah, and sorry, changes automatically. Okay, so that's the at the end of it, they actually do a project. In the 11th standard, they do projects of different dimension. See, they do a project which is uh, in the personal space. That means they can do their jewelry, their watch, their shoes, clothes they wear, you know, something which they carry with themselves next to the social dimension. That means they solve problems which are shared by people, you know. So they have to look at communication and solve those problems. In the third instance, they solve a public design problem. So you're just going outward. And we also have a module on Indian thought and tradition because uh, if you look at it fundamentally, Indian thought and uh, tradition had so much of uh, you know knowledge which was actually given, especially if you learn music, sculpture, yeah, or architecture. The essence of it is so much, but it is not there as part of our learning systems. So we thought that at least a you know, introduction to that particular subject might actually excite the students into thinking in that particular dimension. And the last project is a four-month project, which they can either do it alone or with a colleague. Uh, it's called the Capstone Project. So this kind of summarizes the, the program, you know. I'll pass the six standard, uh, you know, task book to see, you know, how it can be done. No, it's
gone too much ahead. OK. So there are different complexities. Just look at the problem, right? I said that you start with the problem from your own surroundings, then go outside the school, then a little more. OK. Then you look at, like for example, in the ninth standard, you look at waste generated in the school, or go and redesign you know, your primary section of the school. Okay. In the 10th standard, they explore alternative to things which are of public concern, then design with nature and environment. Okay, so you look at it, it's kind of increasing. Then in the 11th grade, they do a communication design problem. Also, they learn about how to do your own startup or your enterprise, you know. And uh, uh, in the 11th standard, in the second semester, they do product design and again a startup enterprise. And the 12th standard, as I said, it's full of projects itself. Okay, so this is just looking at the projects that they handle in the different grades uh, and how it changes. Okay, and uh, we also said that let's look at uh, grading itself as very, you know, dear to the students. So, so we didn't want to give any failed grades. We want it to be all encouraging grades. So it actually the starts from beginning, that's the lowest grade, then to developing, then to promising, proficient, excellent, and outstanding. This is what they'll get in the grade sheets. You know, so it will always be encouraging saying that, you know, I've achieved this particular, this one. And to make this happen, we've actually thought of a matrix uh, with different criteria which the teacher can use to grade them. Okay, so if it, fills all, if it fulfills all the criteria, then he gets the excellent grade. You know, if it doesn't fit any, he gets a beginning grade. You know, so this is how we translated them into, into grading itself. Okay, so there are a lot of issues is still to be sorted out. Okay, uh, I'm saying what is the minimum number of hours one needs? That's an issue that we need to think of. What is the ratio of homework to school work? That's another issue. We've kind of said that two is to one. Okay, uh, it should be based on learning objectives, activities, and outcomes, and it has to be evaluated. And also in the initial period, what is the amount of access to technology? Because there are a lot of places in schools you don't have any access to technology or computers. So we've taken that the problems can be solved without a computer, without access to technologies. You know, still you can actually go through this particular program. Maybe 10 years later, when everybody has access to it, it's not an issue at all. You know, so and so forth to coming to, for example, how do you make it interested for disinterested teachers, which is a very tough question. And also, in the long run, the coaching classes will come in, you know, how to, <laughs> you know, take care of them. See, these are larger issues. Uh, we need answers to this. And I think as a curriculum committee, you need it. Okay. And also, you can be part of this, you know, of course, you can be part of the team which uh, puts in this, you can be part of the team which promotes this, okay, you can be part of the team which gives us feedback. And I think last is the very important thing that we need to be an ambassador to convince the parents to take up this as an option, you know. Yeah, so that's roughly, you know, uh, kind of puts it in a nutshell. Okay, so we've been doing this uh, training program in different parts of the country, okay, so We've done it in Delhi, Calcutta, uh, Jaipur, Bhuvaneshwar, Chennai, and Mumbai. Uh, roughly about 60, uh, you know, either teachers or principals come and attend this workshop. It's a one-day workshop where we, you know, tell them what is design thinking and make them go through different exercises. At the end of it, they even do a toy design exercise for about two, two hours as groups. You know, four or five teachers join up and do. And they've done excellent work, you know, they all design games and toys, okay. So here you can see that, uh, you know, they've designed so many different toys to explain principles of sound. Each one will make different types of sound using different this things. This all that they did in, you know, two hours. And uh, the teachers had to come and make a presentation at the end of it. Yeah, you can see here he's made a robo man to explain uh, Again, principles of different principles, and uh, it's narrated as a as a story at the end of it. Uh, this is the outcomes of the workshop. 
Yeah, so we have a team here, you know, which did this program. Uh, this is the committee members. Plus also a lot of help from both teachers and the designers. That's how we put it together. Uh, uh, that's roughly the composition of the team here. Okay, I'll just take uh, five minutes to go through the overview of, uh, you know, slides. We wanted to, instead of doing a textbook, which is full of text, we said that let's provide slides. These are slides for, you know, here it's PowerPoint slides given to the teachers. They can add their own two bit to it, you know. Uh, this is more like a starting slide, you know. So this is on a subject, the basic subject, what is design? So uh, it starts with asking the students what is design and showing them some examples and uh, starting a conversation with the students. <coughs> uh, for example, you can say they're painting a folk art. Is it a design? Is this design? A kettle, for example, or a sports car, okay? Or you show some logos, an advertisement, you know, or lota or uh, musical instruments. So it starts a conversation and what exactly is design and what part of the, you know, article or object is actually designed here. It also shows that design can go from folk card to all the way to, you know, advertisement to design of vehicles and, you know, uh, motorcycles, right? And then you uh, get into what things are needed to make design, you know. So you need people, you need environment, you need form, you need it to work. Okay, and uh, mostly design is very creative and innovation is part of it and it follows a process. Okay, so this is the fundamentals of this. Then you explain through very simple thing. Like if you had to make idlis, you need to design a vessel which can make it. If you want to make small idlis, you need a smaller vehicle to do, vessel to do it. Yeah, so let's say look at space. Yeah, if it, that's the regular bed. But if you want uh, to use the space more efficiently, you can either put the bed under it or you can put it over it or maybe some other ways of doing it. Okay, so this is how design starts uh, making a difference. So uh, elements of design, all said very simply, you know, it's the dot, the lines, the shapes, forms, textures and colors. A single dot is simple, has no dimension, whereas a random dots and can create confusion. Okay, uh, if the dot is in the right place, it's quite nice. If it's in the wrong place, uh, it's not so nice. Yeah, and you can see dots in things like the uh, stars. And uh, yeah, so lines, for example, can be many types. Uh, yeah, when dots move, they give rise to a line. Yeah, so simple things. Then again, what are the type of lines? There are curved lines, which are soft. There are straight lines which are active, parallel lines which are orderly, surface lines and textured lines which can create confusion. Again, show examples, you know. A simple line, just by changing its shape, can create so many expressions, right? Uh, vertical lines can make something look tall, you know. And to bring in order, we stand in a line. A zigzag line, for example, can create a, a feeling of adventure. Yeah, so very simple exercises, you know, teachers can add to it. Yeah, we give this is for all the subjects. Yeah, yeah, and shape go on to shapes. There are different types of shapes again. The types of shapes, you know, these are the simple shapes and uh, two-dimensional as well as uh, three-dimensional. Yeah, and uh, you can do many things with the shapes again, right? Shapes again, you know, can represent objects or logos and things like that. Yeah. yeah. And kinds also. Yeah. So if you look at it, there's organic versus geometric, realistic versus abstract, complex versus simple, dynamic versus stable, random versus structured. Yeah. So, yeah, color, again, very simple basics of color. You mix uh, primary colors and you end up with secondary colors. Okay, and you can see that color, for example, is very nicely mapped in the nature. Okay, so you have the warm colors and the cold colors. So you have the same thing from nature, right? Yeah, so this is just a small introduction to the basics of design. Yeah, moving on to textures and yeah, so that's roughly it, you know. So any questions or, you know, any feedback, I'll be happy to answer.
I hope you it gave you a glimpse of what we are trying to do. Sure, sure. Thanks. Respond to the questions or so just we had a, a very new way of presentation about thinking design. So I now request uh, any of our colleagues want to interact with Professor Pubaya. So the house is open. In the meantime, he is uh, Any well. questions you. you have? Yeah, even online people. And uh, we have uh, uh, online uh, participants also associated, so they can also be allowed to uh, put their questions. Yes, please. Uh, explaining the five phases that, that is emphasize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. Uh, my question is that in STEM education, there is a component engineering. So there in engineering component also we move in the same manner. Sure. So how it is different from E of STEM? That is my one question. And second thing is that can we integrate design thinking in subject because uh, uh, if it is related with everyday experiences of the student, their immediate context and surroundings, so it will be helpful for them to grasp it. And the third thing is that education is all about developing thinking in various dimensions. So this is also a part of creativity and uh, uh, problem solving and critical thinking and evaluative thinking, analysis, synthesis, all this. So if it is integrated, then uh, do you think it will be uh, more helpful for the student? Of course, it is a tedious uh, task for the teacher and uh, our we curriculum developer, but we think it can be Sure. I think you've kind of answered all the questions. The first one is that, you know, the engineering uh, uh, way of doing things, they've realized that design process is very, very important. Okay, so they've integrated the design thinking process into engineering. That's why you find it's kind of similar. Maybe 20 years back, if you had studied that subject, it wouldn't have been. You know, like the way I learned engineering, it was very vertical. You know, you had only one answer to everything. But now I think the divergent thinking is very much part of engineering. They've realized that it's very essential. The second question that, uh, that uh, how to integrate this into the school system or studying any subject, uh, it's just that you have to reframe the question, okay? And I think you intentionally, you know, NCRT has it in its ethos to do that. Uh, for example, you want to make it more interesting to the children. Okay, so if you want to do that, if you actually look at the design process, right, it starts with observation. Any subject, if you observe, it's much easier to learn than if you do it through a rote mechanism. You know, that's the starting point. So if you look at it, it's nothing. Next one is after observation, you need to analyze it. You know, you have to discuss, you have to think about what you observed. You know, so it could be like that uh, physics principle, light and shadow. You first ask them to probably observe shadow and light in their home, what happens at night, how does the bulb cast its shadow. If the bulb is diffused, how does it cast its shadow. Then you have a small discussion in the next day in the class. They already are, have figured out, you know, what, how light behaves, right? So it's very easy to do that. Then if you actually give them a challenging problem within this particular problem, right, where they have to think and think of solutions, maybe you can ask them, the simplest thing is if you ask them to design a toy with the principles of light, I'm sure all your students will come out with different ideas. And for to come out with that ideas, they would have gone through the whole process. I mean, just, that's just one instance of how you can make it nice. And when they make the toys, they'll use paper or cardboard or, you know, old newspapers to do it, you know. So they actually build it, and when it is tangible, it's something they'll never forget, you know, because you built it with your own hands, and uh, you come to the class, and you made a presentation. So you're actually building a lot of uh, abilities. You know, you ask the students to present, so they become confident in what they're doing, 
you know, many of them remain shy throughout the school education, right? So all that, if, you, if they do something and you ask them to present, that inhibition also goes off. Okay, so in that sense, it is a very simple thing to adopt, you know, and it can be applied to any field, you know, so that's, the, I think, the beauty of it. So we are saying that at one parallel level, please, you know, take uh, the uh, takeaways from design thinking process into all subjects that you do, but parallelly for students, you can also have a discipline called as design thinking and innovation, where they actually are able to express their creativity and look at problems around the schools or surroundings or neighborhoods or maybe even the world and come out with solutions, you know. So at the end of it, they'll become very confident as uh, people who can actually look at, probably even identify problems and be able to solve it. I think if you can achieve it, you can imagine what the country would be. The parallel is like this, you know. So China and India are very nice examples because we similarly have similar issues to solve. So uh, if you look at China, the way it got industrialized was that it didn't have the technology. So they invited people to come up, set up uh, factories there. Uh, they actually almost import everything of it. But they knew that we can't remain at that level. We can't be just a place which produces something for somebody else, right? So they said that at some point of time, we have to go up the scale in the sense we have to become a little more innovative. So the way they thought was that there were around 1,000 art schools. So in 2001, they decided to make them all into design schools, art and design schools. So forcibly, they brought in the design process into these schools. And in one go, China can do it, 1,000 schools became art and design schools, OK? And it produced a lot of people. It helped them into the next stage of their uh, industrialization. Now, you look at China, they're coming out with their own products and you know things, right? Which was not the case 20 years back, OK? India, I think, will do a big coup if we can actually take it to the children's level. Just imagine so many children coming out being creative, you know, and what repercussions and implications that can have into our country. Because our country is desperately, you know, going, you know, trying to go from a developed country, the developing country to a developed country. And we still have so many people who are poor in this country who should not be poor, right? And I think that can only happen with creative solutions. It cannot happen with uh, something that we've been doing for a long time. It's almost 75 years after independence. Yeah, if you look at it, we should not have been in this stage uh, what we are. I think this probably is one of the things can, that can probably make a difference into the whole domain, you know? Yeah, I think it is a long answer to it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, sir. It was really... Uh, need of power to think about the design of uh, design thinking and especially in the light of we are going for the curriculum revision and the new textbooks and syllabi is coming in but my apprehension here is like we have been uh, speaking about this problem solving skills uh, increasing the creativity of the child all the critical thinking skills all these uh, exemplars have been given many activities have been included in our textbook and it has been integrated in all the subject area but where we find the problem is the teachers do not implement it in the classroom, mainly because the examinations are not, or the assessment procedures are not taking any value for these skills or competencies. So we really have to think about how we can uh, means administer this, means, uh, make the teachers do it, so that, because we have a society which is mark oriented. So how to do I mean, away with that and come I mean, to I don't have a, a you know solution to this because it's a catch-22 kind of situation, right? We have right? to think horizontally. Because, yeah, because we have got uh, into a system which is very difficult to change suddenly. I mean, it has it become part of our you know, tradition to, to say. And uh, we got this system from the British and we didn't really change it. We should have done it long time back, right? Yeah, we didn't do it. But I think there are two sides to it. One is that you're changing the curriculum. So the learning process for the children is better, if you look at it. You know, the way I learned and the way the present generation learns, there's a big difference. At the end of it, they have to, you know, memorize or whatever and, you know, sit for an exam is another thing. At least, 
in the process of learning, you're making it better. I think you've solved the first problem if you do that. Second problem, I think the NEP should address it. Right? I mean, there are larger questions. You know, for example, one of the dear questions which we are, IIT, for example, lasts all the time is that because we have created a system of exam, the JE, which is an extremely difficult exam. Okay, of course, it can see what people and get the best out of them, but it also makes so many children's life miserable. You know, because if you get into IIT, it's one thing, but if you don't get into IIT and all that, you know, you spent your nice period of your life actually studying for something which has not been beneficial. So I think these systems need to probably have, have a rethinking and I think it's time to do that. And I think NEP that way, you know, yes. I mean, we all like it because at least it has become, uh, you know, uh, a gateway to change things, you know. At least we have a reason to change things and I think it's a good time to question, yeah. There's no ready answers to what you're saying. For that, we have to understand first that we have to change our thinking pattern. Before designing thinking, pattern of thinking must be changed. He has rightly said that the colonial system and that set of mind, which was not earlier, that's why we could create this much literature, art, architecture, Sulub Sutra, Samarangan Dhar Sutra, so many, and you see the designs and architecture and the carvings and the miniatures and arts and, and the literature. Right. What do you think if this, this much literature has been created, uh, composed in ancient time, why we are not able to compose such type of literature now? So this requires thinking, process has to be changed. And we have, this is some sort of, you know, addiction. This time, we are addicted to this type of system. So we have to de-addict ourselves first, the colonial mindset first. And also, the, I think the middle class yes. Uh, yes. mindset also needs to change. Yes. Because see, it, it was too much against two, I mean, for two disciplines, which was engineering and medicine. You still, at heart, you want your kid to go into one of these. Don't know for whatever reason, but there are so many nicer areas which have come up, you know, and you can do well in many disciplines now. It is not the whole system, right? In the whole, whole, whole yeah. system, maybe those two are the only options available. But now, because there are so many options, but our mindset has not changed. You know? We are so, obsessed. Actually, yeah. this, obsess this is an obsession. We, have, we are obsessed with that. And then yeah. you see the quota industry, how the... <laughs> this is a pro agonizing process and how many kids, they are spoiling their life and ending their life itself. So that we have to change first. First of all, before being teacher, we have to become human being first of all. So I think let's do what we can from our end. Yeah. I think it's more like that and the system might change on its own. I mean, we have to always think of an optimistic future. Can I say rightly mentioned that about uh, design thinking, uh, a curriculum has also been thought of and it is being tried that, uh, uh, children become a real design thinker. But I consider more important that uh, we should really bring some change in the behavior and attitude of our teachers as well. So because <coughs> those teachers who are uh, actually handling these children, uh, they are uh, 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 having uh, a fixed and rigid kind of mindset. So, and that is very important because uh, uh, in one of the uh, uh, discussions somewhere, I have uh, listened about the emotional intelligence also, whether that can be tra tra trained or not. So similarly for design thinking also, we can really some kind of training of our students uh, uh, and you are doing it. And, uh, but before that, I consider that how to do with the teachers. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, Dr. Ellen, he, he can sh show his examples. You know, I don't know, uh, for, for me that, you know, their support was very essential in all this. You know, what they did was that they actually uh, had a course called Design Thinking in which about 70,000 uh, CBSC teachers took that course. It was not forced, it was an optional course, but they actually went through, I think, 75 hours of learning, right? 72 hours of learning they went through 
and uh, uh, if they could answer a few questions. I mean, uh, there was a, at the end of it, uh, there was an assessment, and if you pass about 30,000 have passed through that, and they've been made as the innovation ambassadors, okay? And uh, uh, for example, I don't know my experience, I have very limited experience in uh, dealing with teachers, but uh, these workshops that we conducted, the energy levels and enthusiasm was so high, you won't believe it. All of them said they're very keen on implementing these uh, in their own subjects as well as in in uh, in uh, the design thinking. So that was really heartening to see, you know. Yeah. So that has been our experience. So I think you probably can also change, you know. Yeah, I put that question there. How to change? Yes, yes. That is your. You know, it's a it's no, a no, it's a like, tough. Uh, training for teachers was discussed the first meeting mm -hmm. when uh, Aveji and uh, Ellen came. They clearly said that how many teachers? 72,000? Mm -hmm. 14,000. 14, yeah, complete. Yeah. So this is one thing. Right now, first of all, his lecture is a way forward for framing our curriculum this time. Syllabi. Actually, we are in two ways moving forward. Foundational stages, NCF is almost ready. Our syllabi committee and textbook committee will be working shortly. So for that, uh, we have people here to be in touch with uh, your team or yeah. Aveji and uh, LNG. So that will take part. That is one thing. Second thing is for the teachers. So you have already a pattern for that. Means you are doing workshops and this and that. So through that and our technology, Professor Bera is not here, but uh, uh, through our this uh, Diksa, we can integrate this sure. and we can take it forward. So that way we have to think this time, exactly practically we have to think. Means, uh, it is not that by listening the one lecture we can change our thinking process or we can learn all the, the design thinking. Uh, this is a sensitization sort of sure, thing sure. which is going to happen this time and motive of our, uh, this lecture is the same because a uh, few days back we were talking about innovations and all this and Aveji and I talked and then we could, uh, uh, we could uh, uh, think that we should meet first. So that way we met and then we decided that in the meanwhile, fortunately you were here yeah, by chance. Yeah. So we thought to avail this opportunity and at least have one lecture here. And uh, this again uh, our uh, PAC program is there. So this gathering is also from RIs, principals and deans are here and our faculty is here. So this time uh, this is the best thing we could do, but uh, from here we have to start. Sure. Uh, so whatever support from our side, I think we are there to give, definitely. I worked with uh, Professor Jotsna, we did uh, part of the team which did the graphic design textbook. Yeah. Uh, did you pursue the CBSC to start that course again, that's in a great demand actually. Right. So you can um, probably, because we have written to them, if they can ah. revive that uh, ah. course. I'll just find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that. Yeah, yeah. sure. Helen, you want, he wanted to speak for it. Before we end the session, there is a small presentation about its implementation. So I request of the agenda. Please have me. Keep it yoga. Yeah, same. Yeah. Uh, Bakun and the uh, entire director, sir, uh, 
working in a fast track mode. Yes. Yesterday morning, 10.30, we met him. I was just discussing about the and innovation. He called uh, that it should be implemented immediately. And uh, he called the expert and uh, we are here today. Within uh, 36 hours, some implementation is happening and been addressing its uh, thanks for, uh, on behalf of Ministry of Education, Innovation Cell and IIT Bombay. Sir has been doing this for the past one and a half years. You made it in one and a half years. Our number of uh, uh, participants and uh, no, real implementers. So, can I have the slide, uh, slide please? If you press it, mm -hmm. sometimes it comes. Yeah, you can also see it. Right. First slide. This is slide. First. Next. Next. First one. First one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, the Ministry of Education and Innovation Cell have uh, launched few initiatives for promoting the culture of innovation among school education. Uh, 2018 Ministry had launched Innovation Cell. We have been successful in past four years in implementing in higher education. We have more than 6,000 uh, institutions, say engineering institution, medical and architect institution, where we have been hand-holding them in implementing this innovation initiative. Whatever learning from that, we found that there is a gap which has been lagging. So that when a student comes to engineering institution or higher education, so they, have been, they don't have any foundation about innovation. Keeping that in mind, uh, we have been initiated this uh, uh, innovation at the school initiative. Um, so we had school innovation council, we have uh, school um, innovation ambassador training programs, which uh, professor was talking about, and also we have previous like this. So also we have our uh, uh, design thinking courses, which we have been made with that. And we have a national innovation entrepreneurship promotion policy for uh, promoting innovation and we want to give guidelines to the schools how to implement this policy, which has been first draft, has been already launched actually. It's in the public da domain now. So School Innovation Council, we have launched first July. Our Honorable Secretary Ma'am have been launched this. We have more than 1,050 uh, plus schools which have registered in this School Innovation Council, where they carry out a, a system of activity. The council includes uh, the principal, vice principal, senior teachers, students, industry experts, uh, involved in this process where we will be completely hand holding this is a 360 degree. So where they start from the field visit, identify the ideation, prototype, product development, then we take him still funding the ideas and taking to the startup. This we have been very uh, successful in higher education institution. So this we want to replicate in a school education system. Our secretary ma'am is very keen on implementing it and taking it to the next level. This is a 360 degree which we are Hand holding it, uh, I think the slide changing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just so I'll say next, next, then you can change it. Otherwise, you keep changing it. So it uh, go back, please. Back. Yeah. Okay. So this is the 360 degree way which we are working for uh, promoting innovation at schools. And uh, every time after any activity which we conduct, the school used to take 10-15 minutes to upload a report with one photograph and video and how many students and the teachers have been participated. This is a, our experience in higher education institution. This is the old data. We have uh, students, teachers involved. We have nearly, you know, uh, I can say two crore plus activities which was carried out for past four years related to ideation, innovation, entrepreneurship, startup, which have been made. This is what Professor was talking about, Innovation Ambassador Program where with Ministry of Tribal Affairs and Ministry of Education have jointly launched this in July 21st. It's a 72-hour program where we are talking about design thinking and innovation, where as Professor said, we had 30,000 plus teachers who have completed design thinking already. All these programs are volunteer. No one has been forced to carry out. Teachers came forward, carried out, and they have been implementing it in their schools now. We also have idea how to generate an idea, how to handhold it, and prototype product development, IP, Finance, sales, and HR. We are talking about venture capital. We are talking about startup, how to get funding. All those being guided in this uh, 72 hours module. 
in each module it's a simple procedure where they can log in and register and carry out the training program so far as on uh, today date we have for 14080 teachers completed as a 72 hour model each module they go through it and each module they have assessment after completing the assessment they call as an qualified so those who have been qualified with this we call them as a ministry of education innovation cell innovation ambassadors who are been helping us in change agent at the school level for implementing this you have 11624 schools which have been registered with this and carrying out successfully this initiative for past one year so this across the country all the states and union territories been covered they been comfortable and uh, as i said early volunteer they have been doing it now to implement this sir in the design thinking whatever we are talking about if you want it we can develop a module and this module whatever we have been developed we can just take and include on this portal because it's a self learning where you know they module wise content can be onboarded the teachers can go through it we can give an assessment to them after they complete the assessment it, it becomes like you know they are qualified we can keep uh, certain percentage of assessment and marks or uh, case studies what they have been solving it based on that a committee can be formed to evaluate them and say that they are qualified enough to teach the subject that we can do we are very comfortable in doing that and we can implement which uh, i can say at this point of time for implementing this uh, module so as i said the innovation ambassador program also we have been uh, launched uh, national innovation entrepreneurship promotion policy where um, honorable home minister had launched this on 29 july our secretary uh, school education also has been part of this program where we want to hand over the uh, schools uh, or say like you know teachers in completely uh, how to take in entrepreneurship to the next level that's what what we are thinking we also want to change mindset of teachers the complete uh, it's i can say it's a guiding framework which we have developed so it had gone to a public notice give they have given we had few thousands of uh, no uh, suggestions to implement it we have revised it and it's in ministry for publishing it it's already launched it as a draft one we are looking for incentivizing the teachers and so we want to start this entrepreneurship from the school level that's what which we are trying with that so this professor had briefed you where we had a different location this entrepreneurship skill module also we have been uh, promoting this out of box thinking creativity innovation we have been doing a, a hackathon uh, honorable prime minister have been regularly participating in all these hackathons this year we also introduced for school education where large number of students across the country have been participated in the hackathons where we have winning teams have given a prize up to 1 lakh what we are trying to do all this we want to make sure that from the grassroots level the students have been uh, made to think our creative or out of box thinking which we want to bring it in their day to day activities is what we are trying to do we want to bring many more startups as professor said when the creativity starts we are all talking about 5 trillion economy which will help uh, it doesn't go happen within a school or within a institute or a premier nationally funded institution alone it should happen at a grassroots level from schools so that it helps to, uh, whatever our uh, mission or vision of our honorable prime minister has been set to us so that's what we are trying to start this at from the school level with all your support i'm sure very much we can do we can say we are a growing country uh, a developing country this is an example that in 2015 in the global innovation index we were at 81st position today we are at 40 position there is we can see a big jump in this seven years the choice is already we are in the process so implementing this at the school level will make uh, our country to stand in the better position that's what we are all working towards and we looking forward ncert uh, support also to take this to next level because it's not alone an individual or a group or a school it's going to make our country proud and stand in a better position that's what uh, what we are all looking into it for uh, implementing this we have a team Uh, at a state wise we have been working coordinating the schools and teachers for doing it successfully so with this a brief i thank uh, everyone for being part of this program and giving opportunity to address this occasion thank you with this we come to an end of uh, this session of uh, on design thinking and innovation and uh, i take this opportunity to thank uh, professor ravi pogaiya for sparing his time and perhaps it's it was in a very short notice but uh, he readily agreed to uh, come to ncert and delivered his lecture and uh, really enlightened us and i also need to thank uh, dr l was uh, uh, in a very short Professor explained as to how this can be really scaled up and taken up in school education for the benefit of our children. 
and I am thankful to Dr. NCERT that he has program for uh, all faculty of NCERT for the benefit and his presence here. I thank uh, Joint Director NCERT Professor Sita Srivastava for his presence, and I also thank all uh, NCERT colleagues who have uh, keenly participated in this and interacted with the speaker. So with this, I really thank all the speakers and all participants here. Thank you so much.